Hi guys and welcome to another tutorial. In this video we'll be looking at nested VMs and that means a VM running inside another VM. Let's get started. So again, what is a nested VM? Well, a nested VM is when you run a virtual machine inside another virtual machine or basically nesting a hypervisor within a hypervisor. You know, it always reminds me of a Russian doll. You know, when you open one there's another inside. Well, recently I had someone ask me if I'd had any luck running Windows in VMware inside OS X running on Unraid. So I had a look at it and figured out why it wasn't working and how to get it to work. I was going to leave it there, but I thought it would be a good opportunity to look into the subject further and make a whole video about nested VMs. So let's look at running the following hypervisor configurations and see what happens. 1. Running VMware ESXi with a Windows 10 guest. 2. Running VMware Workstation on a Windows VM with a Windows 10 guest. 3. Running VMware Fusion on OS Sierra VM with a Windows 10 guest. 4 running Windows 10 with Hyper-V and a Windows 10 guest and finally running Parallels Desktop on an OS Sierra VM with a Windows 10 guest. But before we start, let's talk about the differences between a Type 1 hypervisor and a Type 2 hypervisor. Right, so a Type 1 hypervisor runs on the computer without the need for a third-party operating system and it also has direct access to the hardware, examples of which are ESXi and KVM. Now some people will argue that KVM isn't a Type 1 hypervisor because it's part of the operating system, but KVM is actually the virtualization layer in the Linux kernel. And just the same as ESXi, it only runs on one kernel and has direct access to the hardware, making it a Type 1 bare metal hypervisor. And Type 2 hypervisors, they do require a host operating system to run on, and common examples are running VMware Workstation on Windows or Parallels Desktop on a Mac. And on a side note, interestingly the differences debated about the two different hypervisors actually go back to 1974 and a paper published called Formal Requirements for Virtualizable Third Generation Architectures, which was written by Robert Goldberg and Gerald Popek. Robert Goldberg actually abandoned the distinction in his future papers. OK, now with the background information out the way, Let's get on with installing ESXi on Unraid. OK, we have to enable nested VMs in Unraid with a command. In 6.2 it is enabled by default, but in 6.3 it isn't because it's been known to cause issues with a vast antivirus in Windows VM. But what we're going to do, rather than add it to Unraid permanently, is I've made a little script to better turn it on and off. So to install the script, then go to Community Applications and type in User Scripts and install the plugin. OK, as you can see the plugin's installed at the bottom. And now what we need to do is download this file from the description and unzip the file and there'll be two folders nested on and nested off. By default they're set for Intel CPUs but if you have an AMD CPU you're going to need to just open up each script and change the CPU type from 1 to 2 if you're AMD or leave it as 1 if you're Intel. So then what you need to do is go to your flash drive and go to the config folder then go to plugins, scroll down to user scripts and then the folder called scripts and just pop these two files in there and then you can close all of this and now if we open up user scripts you'll see the two scripts here nested on and nested off and so then just run the script for nested VMs on and if you want to, you can set it to automatically start at the array start if you want to have it permanently set. Okay, so now let's go ahead and install our ESXi VM. So we're going to base it off a Linux template. So let's give it a name and I'm going to give it a different icon. If you don't have any custom icons, then see my other video about installing custom icons in VMs. So I'm going to give the VM 12 CPUs and 16 gigs of RAM and I find it works a lot better on CBIOS, it's much faster, so 
to CBIOS and then the install ISO obviously is the ESXi installer and for the primary V disk I'm going to make it 60 gigs and make sure the primary V disk is set to SATA and we're going to have VNC I'm going to pass through a keyboard and mouse because I'm using a Mac and during installation you have to press F11 and using VNC pressing F11 doesn't do what it should hence the pass through keyboard so untick start VM after creation and then click create and now we're going to have to edit some things in the XML so let's scroll down and find our network adapter so let's change from vert.io to vmxnet3 and there's one last thing we need to do is to put in between devices and domain just paste this what you'll find in the description it's two QMUR values and then click update and now we can start up the VM and install the system let's open up VNC and let the installer run through and follow any prompts and here we just need to choose a password okay so now the system successfully installed just press enter okay and so now the ESXi is up and running we can close this Okay, so now the VM's up and running, let's log into it. Um, its IP address is 10.10.20.15. Then we need to put in our username and password we created earlier. Okay, so let's install a VM. We'll install Windows 10, I think. And now we get a warning of an incompatible hypervisor. Now this is actually quite easy to fix. We need to edit settings, then VM options and advanced. Then click on edit configuration. And we need to add this parameter which you can find in the description. VMX allow nested. And we need to give it the value of true. And now the VM will power up absolutely fine and we can go through and install Windows 10. And so that's the first nested VM created using VMware ESXi and Windows 10. So let's move on to our second hypervisor, this time VMware Workstation on Windows 10. So a Type 2 hypervisor. Okay, so let's start up VMware Workstation and create a new virtual machine. And I'm going to choose the 64-bit version of Windows 10. Okay, so now it's creating the disk. And what you'll see, it says that it's running through an incompatible hypervisor. So what we need to do is close the VMware and then go to our My Documents and then go to virtual machines windows 10 and open this .vmx file here i'm going to use sublime text and at the bottom of this file paste the following line vmx.allow nested equals true and then save the file and that's the same parameter that we used in esxi then just start back up vmware and power on the virtual machine click ok here and then the operating system will begin to boot. And as you can see, the Windows install is just going through. And the installation went fine. Windows 10 64 bits now successfully installed. I'll just open up a web browser, then shut the virtual machine down. Yep, everything's fine, so let's close this down now. Okay, so now let's leave our Windows VM and let's go across to an OS X VM and install VMware Fusion on that and see if we can install Windows 10 as a VM on top of our OS X VM. So let's create a custom VM and then install Windows 10. And as normal with any VMware, we're getting the incompatible hypervisor warning. So what we need to do is we open up Finder and go to Documents then Virtual Machines then right click this and click show package contents and there you'll find the VMX file. 
So just edit the VMX file and add the line vmx.allow nested equals true, then save the file. And one important thing to note here, if you notice the install image I've mounted, it's actually the Windows 10 and it's the 32-bit edition. Now the 64-bit edition will not work. You'll get this error here saying 64-bit operation is not possible and the host does not support Intel VTX. And that's because when we set up our OSX VM, we had to define the CPU as Penryn, and that doesn't have VTX support. So for our nested VM in OSX, we're going to just have to use the 32-bit version, which will install absolutely fine. So you can see the Windows Virtual Machines booted up in OSX, and it's working absolutely fine. So there we have it. The 32-bit version is the one to use if you want to use Windows 10 in VMware in an OSX VM. OK, so now let's look at Hyper-V on Windows 10. As you can see here, I managed to install the Hyper-V components. I could only actually do this on a CBIOS machine. If I tried on the OVMF, it wouldn't install at all. However, if we try and run a virtual machine in Hyper-V, unfortunately we get an error. It says one of the Hyper-V components is not running. This is apparently due to a bug in KVM, which will be fixed in the 4.10 kernel. So unfortunately, Hyper-V is out at the moment. So let's now go on and try Parallels Desktop in OSX. And if we try and start a new Windows 10 VM, we actually also get an error here and the installation can't go on. So Parallels is also a fail. So it looks like VMware is the one to use. So let's have a look at the results. While running VMware ESXi with a Windows 10 guest, that worked absolutely fine. And running VMware Workstation with a Windows 10 guest, that worked absolutely fine as well. And running VMware Fusion on OS Sierra, with a Windows 10 guest, that did work, but we could only actually do a 32-bit version of Windows 10. And Windows Hyper-V and Parallels Desktop, they were both a fail and couldn't get them to work at all. So, as I said earlier, for a secondary hypervisor to run a nested VM, VMware is definitely the way to go. So that brings us to the end of another video. Anyway guys, if you like the video then please hit the like button and if you're not already a subscriber then why not subscribe to the channel and if you like what I do then any donation is greatly appreciated which you can do at the top of the channel in the right hand corner. Anyway guys, whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in that next video.